Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to A Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today we're going to do the collaboration challenge of what would you make. So I have a few wood products that I want to paint up and do some things with them. And uh, I wanted to bring you guys along. On one of my previous videos, I said I didn't have a burgundy color. I ran out. And one of my friends, thank you, Tracy, mentioned to me that you can take red and black, put them together and make a burgundy color. I knew this, but it didn't click in my mind to do that at the time. And I thought, why? I don't have red. But I actually found out that I do have red. I bought a brand new bottle of Waverly Chalk Paint in Crimson, which is uh, Crimson, which is uh, the red paint. So, and I have some of this acrylic multi-service folk art paint, which I really love. I've used it a few times and I really like it. So I'm going to do some mixing of that. So we're gonna do that first before we get into what would you make using this box for the first project. So I'm going to reuse this relish jar and I'm gonna put about I'm going to say about three or four tablespoons of that crimson color in the jar and then just put a few drops of the black in there. I'm going to start with that because that will, that's going to really change the color really quickly with just a little bit of paint. So I did just a few drops and it really came out nicely. I really like the burgundy color that came out of it. So I have this recipe box. It's just a plain brown box with the lid and I'm going to give it a burgundy paint job. We're gonna paint it all over. I'm just doing the lip. I'm not doing the inside at all. There's no need. And I'm not doing the inside of the lid either. I am gonna do the top, but I'm gonna do a little bit of a different thing on that. But I'm just gonna paint it all over. The lid I sanded the very uh, top of it and I'm just going around the edges. There's a little lip there and I'm going around the edges and painting that burgundy on the top. Just going around all the way. And in the very middle I'm going to take some of my antique wax that's watered down with a little bit of black paint in it and I'm going to uh, antique wax or stain that very middle section. So here it is right here, and I can't tell you how much I have in that antique wax. You just have to play with it and figure it out yourself. I've added to it so many times, I don't know the ratio anymore. I wish I did. I'll have to do it up again sometime when I uh, can figure it out. So I'm just brushing this on. I know it looks like black paint, but it really is stained with a little bit of black paint in it. Very little. And then I'm just taking my rag and wiping it off. So once that gets wiped off, it looks more brown black and you can actually see the uh, wood underneath. So it looks pretty cool, I like it. So now I'm just sanding down the edges, distressing it, and then I decided to do the whole, uh, the whole side of the box. So the whole box get, is going to get sanded down even in the middle, but I'm going to go heavily on the edges in the corners and make that look like a distressed box. Coming in with my antique wax and I'm doing a light coat of the wax over the top of the box. On the edges I'm going a little bit darker uh, where I distressed it with the sandpaper and trying to get some of that black to stick down onto the raw wood that's coming through. So you kind of get a mix of the raw wood and the black stain and the burgundy all in one. If I get it too heavy in spots, I take my sandpaper, which I'm doing right there, and I'm sanding it just a little bit if I think it's a little bit too heavy. So I think I really like this. It gives it nice, nice streaky black look, very distressed. I did the same with the lid. I sanded it down and then I took the antique wax and just went around the edges and then went back and wiped it off. 
Now this is a little hen or rooster I got from Tractor Supply actually. I think it was $4.99. Uh, it's in the front. It's just a plastic, plastic little kid's toy. But I picked it up because I wanted to do something with it as a knob. I can't find knobs right near where I am and I'm in Tractor Supply a lot getting chicken feed. So I looked at those and said, geez, I really could do something with that. So I painted it the black uh, folk art color and then I let that dry and now I'm putting burgundy over the top of it and I'm going to distress that back so that you can see the black in spots where like the feathers are and stuff through the paint. So this is just a wet paper towel and I'm just wiping it back and it's coming right off nicely, not too much but I think it looks great. And this is a little sign I got. You get a four pack from Dollar Tree. I picked it up because I needed a couple little signs, but they came with four in a pack. So I decided to use this on the front of my recipe box. It has a little clip. So I thought it would be really cool to have the clip up so that if you had a recipe that you wanted to follow, you could actually clip your recipe to the front of your box. And uh, you'd be able to read it without getting your recipe card all messy. So now I am taking my E6000 and a little bit of hot glue and putting it on the bottom of my little rooster. And I'm going to put it on the top of my box. This is going to be my little knob for my box. They have so many different animals in there. You could have a pig, a sheep, they even have giraffe and lions all kinds of stuff. So depending on what you're looking for, I'm sure they would have what you're looking for. Uh, I'm taking the little sign E6000 and some hot glue and putting that right on the front. Again, I'm taking the little, there's a little clip on the back and I'm putting that upwards so that you can clip your card to it. Here are some beads that I got off from Amazon. If I can find the link to that, I will put it down in the description for you. And I'm going to take those. These are going to be feet. I've used these several times for feet. I think everybody has. But I'm going to use my antique wax mixture and I'm going to stain those up and then wipe them back and then apply them to the bottom of my box so that it stands up off from the counter. I think this is going to look so cute. A little E6000 on the bottom with a dab of hot glue on the bottom of those beads and they are good to go and will stick for a long time on the bottom of those boxes. Let's check out the finished product and see what you think. For project number two, I have this picture frame and a little home sign. The home sign I got from Michaels, the picture frame I got from a friend. She gave me, she dropped by and gave me a few boxes of goodies from her home, so thank you, Kathy. I have this pan. You get two of them from the Dollar Tree for $1.25, and I picked the package of these up, and I'm going to trace the inside of this little frame. These have three little button hooks on them which are really cute. So I'm going to cut this little uh, piece out so that I can put it in, insert it into the frame where a picture would go. While I can handle it easily, I'm going to sand down the frame just a little bit so that the paint will stick to it because it will be getting painted. 
And now I'm going to glue that piece of aluminum down into that, that frame. So I'm going to take some of this folk art black paint and I'm giving this whole piece a paint job, just one coat of this black paint. I really like this folk art paint. It's very silky smooth when it goes on and it's actually fairly thick. This is an acrylic paint, so it's not a clay based paint, but I really like it. So I'm going to take this home sign and my made up burgundy color paint and I'm going to paint all of this uh, sign back and front all around. And this picture frame and even the middle part is going to get a little bit of a sanding just to distress it back a little bit. And there, me do, there I am doing the middle and just bringing back some of that shininess, but not too shiny, of the aluminum. The home sign got distressed as well with a little bit of sandpaper. And now I'm taking, again, my antique wax, my mixture, and I am going over that and then going to wipe it back. A little E6000 and some hot glue and that is going to get stuck onto that picture frame and I think it'll stay just fine. I'm going to add a couple of sprigs of pit berries in the back of the home uh, word in, in that sign. Just give it a little bit of hot glue and we'll have it in there so that it will stay and not fall out. And I'm going to do another one on the other side and glue that one in. And then I did rip off a piece of homespun material, just the burgundy and uh, off-white color checked material. And I pop that through the back and around the front. We're just going to give it a little tie. It's not going to be a bow or anything like that. We're just going to tie it and then give it a little trim. There we go. And then the back needs to be finished off. So I grabbed this cereal box, the Cheerios, just finished those this morning. And I cut the box out and flipped it over so that it's nice plain on the back. And we're going to finish the sign off. And here is the finished product. Project number three is a set of salt and pepper shakers. I got these for $5 a long time ago at, I would say a flea market because it doesn't have the sticker on it from like a Goodwill or anything. It's got a tag. So I'm going to sand this down a little bit. They're a little bit shiny and I did clean them, but I feel like they're a little bit kind of kitchen yucky. So I also sanded them back. I'm taking my antique wax mixture and I'm going over the whole thing. I wanted to tell you about this collaboration today with this video. It's What Would W-O-O-D You Make? There are two hosts, OK at Home DIY and Connie's Creative Creations, and the guest host is CJ DIY. These are very creative ladies, and you are going to enjoy their content. If you go down in my description box, you'll find the links to their channels and also the link to the playlist to this awesome collaboration. So please go check it out. I completely covered the salt and pepper shakers with the antique wax mix and now I'm wiping them back and I really like how it sets down in the grooves. And now I'm going to take a little bit of black paint and I'm going to paint the top and the bottom 
and leave a space in the middle with just the distressed part. So here I am painting that part and I'm just doing the top knob on each of those and then I'm going to go down and do the bottom section that's ribbed. So once that was all painted and dried, I went through and distressed it with a little bit of sandpaper. And then I got my little star stamp that I have. I think it's for a stamp for cloth, but I've had these for a long time. I have a few different sizes and I use them on wood all the time. They're kind of like a sponge. And so I got the burgundy color and put it on there. I distressed the stars and like all my other projects today, they all were clear coat sealed. I hope you like my projects today. Don't forget to go down and check in the description box below for the hosts and co-host of this challenge and the playlist so you can check out all the other awesome creators that have made videos for this. I also have an Etsy shop that there is a link in my description as well. These products will be on there for sale as, long, as well as other projects that I have done. So please go check it out if you're interested. I will leave a link here for some other videos if you would like to Keep going and check out some more of my content. I'd much appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.